Hi, this is Pete Lyons with another Let's Play Salesforce video, and today we're doing part five of Einstein Analytics Binding Basics. Where last we left off, we had added a limit toggle to our chart that groups by industry, and we made our reference line smart enough to only show the average amount of the accounts uh, or of the industries that are currently being shown. So today, we're going to try to dynamically change the color of that reference line as it moves. So first thing we're going to need to do uh, is we're going to need to create a step that's going to uh, give us a different color value based on what's coming in from the uh, average amount um, on our amount underscore one step that is powering the reference line. And this is going to need to be a SACL step so that we can uh, leverage the case statement functionality. So first I'm going to create a, a step on my DTC opportunity data set. I'm going to set it to average of amount. But this is really just a placeholder for uh, where we're going to add our binding later. So let's go into the SACL editor and take a look at what this is actually doing. Now all queries, compact or SACL, they get transmitted to the server as SACL queries. So um, our reference line step is doing very much uh, the same thing here. It's taking the function, uh, the aggregate function average, and applying it to the field amount, and generating that as a column called AVG underscore amount. So this is the column that we're going to need to pull off of when we do our binding later. But first we need to get a case statement in here. Now if I wanted to do multiple fields on this, I could say also, you know, generate X as test. If I run my query, we see that that creates a new column. So input as column uh, is how we generate, you know, this is what each column of our for each statement is, and they are comma delimited. So we want to do as color, we want to create a column called color, and for its input we want a case statement. So here's the basic syntax of a case statement. when one then A, when two then B, else C end. Um, this is going to take whichever condition is met, it's going to return the output of that, so we would get either A, B, or C as our color. So now let's start uh, filling those gaps in and getting rid of some of these placeholders. Now what we want ultimately is the result coming from our reference line, but for now, we're just going to put in the average amount. The uh, SQL editor does have some nice type ahead functionality. So we'll copy this over here. And we don't want to output A, B, and C. We want to output some uh, hex code color values. So we'll say for this one, I want uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, FF. Uh, for this one, I want my Fs in the middle. I don't know very many hex codes, so we're keeping it basic. And for our last one, we're going to want hashtag uh, FF0000. Okay. Now, uh, we're not done yet because we're saying when average amount, well, when average amount what? So we need to actually give it something that's going to uh, return Boolean true or false. So we're going to say, well, when it's greater than something. And uh, what is it greater than? Well, uh, we want to start with our highest value for using greater than, and we know that the three values that our reference line is going to take is roughly one point, little over 1.4 million, a little over 1.3 million, and a little over 1.1 million. So we'll start with that. 1400000 or 1.4 million. For this one, we're going to say greater than 
million, and the else will catch anything below that. So now let's run that and see what happens. It's going to return the Fs at the beginning. The reason why? Well, is average amount right now it's 1.1 million. So is it greater than 1.4? No, so it's not this outcome. Is it greater than 1.3? No, so it's not this outcome. It falls into the else. Uh, you'll also notice that it added in uh, some parentheses here for me. Um, I didn't add those. We're going to have to remove those later when we uh, drop in our binding, though. So what's next here? Let's demonstrate real quick what would happen. Let's, let's drop this to a lower number. Let's say make it 0.13 million. And now I expect that when I run my query, my Fs are going to come in the middle because 1.1 is greater than 0.13. And as expected, the Fs are in the middle. So now we'll put this back the way we had it and save our query. <clears throat> so let's hop into the code editor and take a look at what actually got created. This is going to be called lens1. And we'll notice that it put it all on one string, and it turned our line breaks into uh, slash n. Um, if we reopen this with the editor, it will know to, uh, to take those as line breaks and it will break it all out. Uh, the other thing it did for us is it put in the escape characters uh, before the quotes around our hex strings uh, because the editor does not natively, uh, doesn't need the escape characters, but it saves them for you because the JSON does. So now we want to start replacing instances of uh, average amount with our binding. But first, let's get this guy on the screen where we can keep an eye on uh, what it's doing. So I'm going to create a table. I'm going to put my SQL step onto it. And now let's start binding to it. <clears throat> so first, I'm going to replace this guy here. And because this is a number, um, I don't need to close the binding in quotes. We're going to be pulling the result of our reference line uh, very similarly to uh, how we pull it off of that step uh, and put it onto the chart in the first place. So we're going to do generate column. First is the step name. Dot result. Second parameter of the column function. We need an array of column or columns. We just want one. It must be enclosed in escaped quotes. And the name of that is avg underscore amount. And that needs to get returned as an object. And that is a function. So now <clears throat> it's projecting the average amount as shown in our uh, reference line step, but that is not changing the uh, hex color value that's coming through because it's still doing its own aggregation. So we need to swap out these other instances of AVG underscore amount. And I don't think we actually need to get rid of those parentheses. We just want to make sure that we don't delete the first one. We're only going to replace AVG amount. And then we have a second instance of it right here. So now, what we would expect is that as we change our limit, the AVG amount, average of amount right here is going to change, and the hex color value is going to change as well. So now it moves to the middle. Now it moves to the left. So far, so good. Now we need to tell the reference line to change colors based off of that. So we're going to bind onto the reference line. Let's take a look at that reference line before we do. Get back there. So I'm going to look at my x-axis parameters. And we'll see that it already knows that we're binding the, the value 
from our step amount underscore one. We've got it labeled ref line, and there's its color. So let's take a look at the code. Here's our reference line, and this is what we need to replace. So let's put our binding in here. This is going to take, uh, this takes either uh, hex values or RGB. So we're going to start by double curlies for our binding. We've got to figure out what the name of our lens was again. I think it was lens one. Right. Lens one. So we're going to say go get the column in lens one dot result. Nope. And we want escaped quotes. We want the column color and we want it as an object. Let's see what happens for this. Now our reference line has disappeared. Why is that? Well, because we're passing this in as an object. We don't want an object. We want a string. We need our data to come back to us in a different shape. Now we see our reference lines back, but is that the color we want? No, because it's not actually changing color. So we're still not quite there. It doesn't know what to do. So what's the actual problem here? is that because we're grabbing a column, it's returning that as an array. We don't want to grab a column this time. We just want to grab uh, a, a particular row or cell. So let's try switching this to cell. So for cell, we need to give an index position. We're going to say 0, which is going to be the first cell. And it's going to be in the column color. So this zero is which row is it, and this is which column is it. And since we're only getting one cell, we do not want to enclose our column value in an array. So now we're saying go and get the cell in row zero of the color column and return it as a string. Now we get our different colors at our different positions. So I'll try to make it a point to learn some uh, hex codes that are a little less jarring on the eyes. Um, but we've set out uh, to change the color of our line as it moves, and we have. So if you like this video, um, please uh, like, subscribe, uh, tell a friend, and make suggestions. And as always, thanks for watching.